What's going on, Savage? It's your boy, Jason Christo. Listen, welcome to this episode. I wanna help you guys out. If you are somebody who wants to learn how to avoid blood sugar lows while you're training, stick around, because I'm gonna give you guys some key tips that are gonna help you guys power through a workout and avoid that blood sugar low that I know sometimes happens to a lot of us diabetics. On this channel, I do food reviews, supplement reviews, and I specialize in helping diabetics to build muscle, burn fat, get healthy, either help to heal their diabetes or cure their diabetes 60 days or less. I also help to give workout tips and advice to help you build muscle, burn fat, and get healthy. I also throw in some motivational stuff just to get you guys rolling. So if anything that sounds good, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification, hit that like button. It just helps me throw these videos out and put them out there. I love you guys. Let's just dive right into this one. You guys see me here with this Gatorade bottle. I used to play hockey, I played soccer growing up. So for me, Gatorade really helped me out in terms of keeping my blood sugar up. If my blood sugar was going low, having something like half a Gatorade would help me out to get through a hockey workout where it's super intense. It's taking a lot of sugar from that anaerobic exercise out of my blood. And so I was more prone to going into low blood sugars. And so what I would do is keep a Gatorade and I would give myself, have myself about 15 grams of sugar to start. If I was starting to dip to about a four uh, or a, or a 4.5, even a five, I'd make sure I had half of the Gatorade, which is about 15 grams to 20 grams of carbohydrate. And that really helped me out to avoid a blood sugar low. First thing that you guys want to figure out is how much your blood sugar rises after having a certain amount of sugar. For example, if you know that taking 15 grams of sugar is gonna raise your blood sugar by two MMOL, then what you're gonna figure out is that, okay, if I'm going into a workout now and I know that my blood sugar is at a five, and typically one of my blood sugar is at a five, I know that I'm gonna go into a low situation now because of the training that I'm doing. What you wanna do is you wanna find out how much does 15 grams of sugar from let's say an orange juice or a banana or a fruit. Keep in mind, if you're having something like an orange juice, it's gonna raise your blood sugar a little faster than if you have fruit, because it has to go through the fiber for it to get into your system. So if you're having orange juice, use that for where you start. Right now you take 15 grams of orange juice and you figure, okay, maybe it's gonna raise my blood sugar by two to three MMOLs for my blood sugar. So your blood sugar starts to raise. Now you're from a 5.0 to an eight, right? Now we're at eight before you work out. Now what you wanna do is see what happens with that. Right now, if you're somebody who knows how low you go when you start off with a 5.0 blood sugar, then let's say you're, you go down to a three. Then you know typically when you work out at that intensity, you're going down to about a three or a two. So shifting and having something with 15 grams of sugar from an orange juice before you work out will raise that two to three units and that will help to keep your blood sugar stable because as you train and as you work out, your body absorbs glucose without the need of insulin. And so now what you do is prior to your workout, 15 minutes before, have 15 grams of orange juice. That way you're not doing it too early so your blood sugar is high before you work out, but you have just enough so that you can get into the workout to help to keep your blood sugar stable throughout your workout. Now if you're somebody who's not 100% sure where your blood sugar is or how much thing sugar will raise your blood sugar, one thing you could do is do it fasted. When you wake up in the morning, you are in a fasted state. And so this is the best time for you to get a fasted blood sugar reading. And on a day where you have a normal blood sugar, this is the best day to do it. And now what you're gonna do is take 15 grams of sugar. And after you take 15 grams of sugar, wait about 30 minutes and see where your blood sugar is. See how, how high that blood sugar got to. Over about two to three times of doing this, you can get an average for how much 15 grams of sugar is gonna increase your blood sugar personally, and now you can take that information and put it towards your workout plan so you can avoid dipping too low when you guys are training, right? And again, this is sometimes a trial and error process. Anybody that says this is exactly how you do it is lying to you. You wanna do something where you know, at the end of the day, that if I take this much, this is how much it's gonna increase, this is how much it's gonna decrease. Keep a diary of it so you know it. It's a little bit of work up front, but in the long run, it's gonna help you guys when it comes to really knowing and avoiding that blood sugar low as well. So again, just to recap, just make sure you take in enough sugar and you know kind of how your body responds to certain sugars so you know how much sugar to ingest in so you avoid that blood sugar low. Again, another thing that you guys are gonna to wanna to take into account is, is how much does your blood sugar drop with one unit of short acting insulin, like a Humalog, for example. And so this way, you know, if you had to take insulin within an hour of working out, that insulin still hasn't reached its peak. So you wanna factor that into the equation of your blood sugar going, potentially going low during your workout by knowing how much insulin, when was the last shot that I gave myself? Because sometimes it can, it's something that can go over your head a little bit or you forget. So just remind yourself that insulin usually reaches, it, reaches its peak, short acting around 90 minutes. 
So you wanna be aware of that, and even up to three hours, you wanna be aware that that's still in your system. You wanna take that into account in terms of what your blood sugar is. Maybe you're a six, but you just gave yourself insulin about, what, 30 minutes to an hour ago, and so you wanna take that into account in terms of having sugar. So you might think I'm a 6.0 and that's great, I can train like that, or a 7.0, but you gotta keep in mind as well that you still got insulin on board, right? So you might still need a little bit of juice before that workout, just because that insulin still hasn't reached its peak at that 90 minute mark in order to bring your blood sugar down. So these are just little factors that you can keep in mind that can help you to avoid a blood sugar low and keep you guys fucking strong, keep you guys healthy, and make sure you guys are building muscle and avoiding that blood sugar low. It's your boy Jason Christo. Make sure you guys follow, like for more tips, and subscribe. I got you guys.